Hello YouTubes, I'm starting on a new project today and I thought I'd do a bit of a video build log. I've been playing a fair bit of Gore Chosen, which is a Games Workshop uh, box game set uh, during the Age of Sigma, and it's a fairly fast-paced brawler kind of uh, gladiatorial kind of game for up to four players. But what I was thinking about doing today, um, or over a number of days, is... Uh, so he here's the board, and the features on the board, these red hexes here are pits, um, and then the walls themselves are objects that you can interact with. So you can be pushed into a pit or pushed up against the wall and damage is taken. The board itself is not particularly big. I'll put a couple of miniatures on just for your reference. Uh, but the thing about this board is it's very flat. I noticed that as soon as I pulled it out. Like obviously it's going to be flat because it's a board. But all the features uh, that we're looking at here really want to be three-dimensional and so using the uh, newfound knowledge uh, that I have gained over watching many hours of YouTube tutorials I'm planning on making a three-dimensional custom gore chosen board so the first thing was that I've uh, decided on the material that I'm going to use and this stuff is multi-use foam board so I got this from Bunnings for all the Australians out there and I think it was $27 for it was a large sheet to be honest if you're making um, simple steps given the thickness of this board um, it, it might even be better just to get thinner boards and, and glue them on top because I am gonna have to cut this it's it's definitely my favorite um, basing material and it's gonna let me do well the, the bulk of the design of this board is going to be carved out of this stuff all right, so I've measured out the uh, the steps and the place for the board. Just see here. And then the intention is that um, there'll be two steps. These are two and a half centimeter centimeters each. But the intention now is to cut this up. You've got a couple of options. So I've just got a, um, it's a Fisker's uh, blade there, uh, a, a Wushtoff kitchen knife. Uh, and then here I've got, this is a uh, Woodland Scenics uh, foam cutter. The, the limitation that you have with the hot wire cutter, which is by far the best way to do this, you'll get, you'll see what I mean later. Um, but obviously size uh, it is an issue, or the, the width of the cut. So that's about 10 centimeters on the wire there. Um, and obviously that's not going to be enough to get right the way around. So we're going to have to do a combination of, uh, of all of these tools. So there you go, that's all cut out now. Um, you do need a sharp knife if you're not using a hot wire cutter. And obviously here, um, my blades haven't been at all sharp enough. And also I'm kind of impatient. You could be more careful, you could use a sharper blade. This kind of um, mess on the side doesn't actually matter because we're going to be cutting most of this away anyway. For cutting foam and all the rest of it, I highly recommend checking out the Terrain Tutors uh, tutorials on exactly this. And the next step is going to be cutting away these two lines to get uh, two sets of stairs running up towards the main battle board. So the second stair is now done. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to sand it with a uh, fairly fine grained sandpaper. What is this? Um, anyway, I'm going to do that and then come back and show you how well it responds to actual sanding. So after some brief sanding, I'm just going to check that um, I haven't measured poorly, which is kind of a hallmark of the stuff that I do, but that's it it's quite neatly. Now I'm going to use these corners, um, like I think I mentioned before, <clears throat> there'll be some broken walls that sort of uh, frame the whole thing. I don't want them too high because when players sort of reach over to move stuff around, I don't want them to be bumping into it. Um, but that's why I've measured the uh, top uh, platform to be the, the full size of the board so I can sort of decorate, uh, decorate the edges. Uh, the next step at this stage I feel is uh, cutting out a template for the hexes and then I'll uh, transpose one of the hexes onto here, just not a bit of cardboard and then I'll use that to print um, the hexes onto the top of the battle board. So I've gone around all of the edges now, and I've also uh, added <coughs> cracks in 
the masonry. Now this is uh, just using a black ballpoint pen and uh, you can get details on how to do this. Definitely check out the Terrain Tutor and over at Black Magic Craft they've got a number of tutorials on how to do this. It's pretty simple um, and this is a great material to actually use a pen to etch with and as you can see it's it's pretty effective. You can start to see where this is going and also why it didn't matter that we had such rough cuts on our foam because you can see that it's starting to make the texture that we're after anyway. We're now well on the way. I've cut out two plugs here for the pits. Uh, the, the other two pits are actually going to be, I think I said this before, uh, pylons or I don't, I don't know what to call them, but posts with spikes in them. They'll have exactly the same rules as the pits, but I thought I'd just uh, get a bit of variety on the board. So the rest of it now we have got get a decent light here, scatter uh, for the rubble. And I've just got one more side to go before that's finished. The brown scatter stuff you can see here is actually blended up bark. I'll do this side and then the next step will be gluing on weapons, shields, any random bits and pieces that I've got in my spare box of old Warhammer stuff. I'm just skulls and anything I can find to sort of decorate the space. Once that's done, we'll be ready to uh, do an undercoat and then actually start painting. That's all the detail now finished and I have filled the pits with um, the foam and then tacky glue and then grit on top. I'm going to hit the entire thing with a base coat of grey. This is just a standard, it's the most generic grey house paint that I could find. I'm going to water the paint down and I'm going to add a bit of PVA glue into it as well. Here we have a very grey battle board. The next step will be to shade and colour it and for that I'm going to use basically exactly the same method that Kenny Boucher at uh, Next Level Painting used. For, for that you, you do need an airbrush, I've got a Badger Rage here and what we're going to do is use some Vallejo Air, black, standard black, and we're going to shade in all of the recessed areas and all of the detail that, that isn't basically the the stone itself. Shading is now done. And now we're going to start to establish the stone colour with the P3 Meroth white base. First dry brushing layer complete which is Manoth white base and I hit the entire model sparing nothing so the entire thing was dry brushed with a layer of Manoth white and you can see that it's really started to bring out the texture that we rolled in with the alfoil. I'm going to come in again with Manoth white highlight and then I'm going to do that combination again. Looking good so far. Well that took absolutely ages but that's four Interchange coats of Manoth White Base and Manoth White Highlight. It's come out quite well. So that's almost all of the dry brushing done. I've just got to come in and hit the brown areas, the dark brown areas, with a lighter soil sort of colour. And so game colour earth will be what I do. So some targeted air, uh, dry brushing and then we'll be ready to move on to some shading. Alright, all the bones. I've been based in Manoth White Base and then washed with the uh, GW Seraphim Sepia. And they've, they're adding a nice bit of contrast there. And I've also gone and picked out all of the largest stones that are supposed to represent the remains of the walls that have caved in and over to the back. And we've mimicked that colour. Um, I haven't used the airbrush on it at all. 
and it's come out alright. So, but what I'm going to use uh, medium shade brown to blend these back in a little bit. Just uh, they seem to sit a bit sort of harsh on top of the. They, they need a transition, uh, basically. Also, very late change to the game plan. I am not happy with these spiked pillar things. And also, given the straight line sort of geometry that this whole board has, uh, I feel they're probably. I don't, I don't mind how they look, but that probably makes sense if they were. Uh, I, I want to make them a, an even square, basically. Any damage to the paint as I pull these up, I'm just going to cover with. Uh, blood and whatever else um, when it comes to the final stage for decoration. The pits are now pretty much done, so that was airbrushed entirely to get that magma kind of look, and that was a combination of a base of Mephiston Red followed by half and half Wild Rider Red and then just some straight up Wild Rider Red and then Flash gets yellow to hit the center there. So these are being glued down now, the pits are done, all I need to do is some final highlighting and then get gory on the board.